Hi everyone! Today I am going to be talking all about how to use your scrap yarn to make projects. Today's episode is all about yarn scraps. Those giant box of like ends of balls of yarn that I feel like every knitter and crocheter has. One just fell on the floor. Um, <clears throat> and what you do with them. How do you organize them? How do you finally sort of work them into a project of some kind that you will get some use out of them rather than just hoarding them like a dragon all the time? Um, which to be honest is what I normally do. Um, so I have recently um, started a big project with yarn scraps and that gave me the inspiration um, to talk about what to do with yarn scraps um, because I feel like it's a question I get asked a fair amount. So I'm starting off by showing you what I have done with yarn scraps. So far this is about 12 balls, um, like partial balls of yarn scraps and it's going to be a felted jacket sweatshirt thing for my three and a half year old. Now you may be looking at this and saying that does not look the size that you would make for a three and a half year old. And you're right. Two things. My three and a half year old is giant and also this is going, this project is going to be felted. So I'm going to put it in the washer and the dry air and shrink it on purpose so that it's more windproof, um, which would make a better jacket, um, and it will also get smaller. Um, <clears throat> so this was my finished project, um, but I'm not just going to tell you how I made this. I kind of want to talk through my thought process of how I got to the idea of doing this with all of my scraps. Um, so what I basically started with, um, we may need to kind of take a couple of steps back. Um, the first question that I feel like I get asked a lot about scraps is how do you organize them? This is my very sophisticated organization method. We have a lot of th these blue boxes and all of my scraps when I finish, um, whether there's a big amount of them or a small amount of them or whatever they're, they are or they're made from or any of that, um, they all just go in the bucket. Do I think this is the very best organization system? Probably not, um, but <clears throat> I do think trying to categorize your scraps of yarn, your leftover balls of yarn from other projects is probably not something that you should spend absolutely tons of time doing. Um, and the biggest reason is you don't know what you're gonna use your scraps for, so it's really hard to divide them sensibly. Um, so for this project, the only thing that mattered to me with this project, my only rule for yarn that would work in this project, is it had to be a feltable yarn. So it had to shrink, it basically had to be made of a non-superwash wool. Um, the second one is I really wanted most of it to be hand spun, just because I have a lot of hand spun and I kind of thought it would be fun to have this be an all hand spun project. And my third criteria was the three and a half year old who it is going to be for had to pick it out as one that he wanted. So there's no way that I could organize my box of scraps by those characteristics because those aren't normally the things that I would look for when I'm choosing a yarn. Um, so to me, if you have projects that you always do with your scraps, this video may not be all that useful for you because you already know what those are. Um, and so if you have a way that already works for you, you always make all of your scraps that are sock yarn always become hats. Um, and so you have all of your sock yarn that's going to become hats all lives in one box. You don't need me to tell you how to do that. You've already figured, <laughs> figured that out. So if you always do the same thing with your yarn, um, organize it that way. You always make hats, put everything that, that fits that criteria in your box to make a hat, make your hat box. Um, but if you're like me, and I kind of just, I'm just a pack rat, I can't like, I can't, this is almost a whole ball of yarn. Like I can't, what am I gonna do? Throw it in the trash can? Of course not, you have, you have to save it. Um, and so I, I keep, I try to keep sensible amounts of yarn. I try, like this is probably about as small a ball as I would keep. Um, other stuff I do try to, you can compost your yarn scraps. Um, if you've got like 
these, like these kind of scraps I don't save. These go in the compost pile if they are a natural material like a wool or a cotton um, that will break down. Um, but the amounts that are, are bigger than that, um, I just throw them all in here. And then I pull things out um, periodically. I've been doing a lot of macrame design recently and so I'll grab yarn out of here to sort of test out macrame designs with. Or if you just want a little piece, you're going to make a swatch of a color pattern or a, you're trying out a new cable design or something, you just want to practice that thing, these can be really great um, uh, for, for doing that with. Um, or if you're in the garden a lot and you need to tie up your tomato plants, boy does yarn work well for that too. Um, so I kind of dip into this stash a lot um, and just grab, oh I just need a ball to, to demonstrate this thing um, or to finish this one little project. Um, but I was ready, um, I had overflowed into a second and a third if I'm being honest bin like this um, and so I was ready to do a big project with them. The benefit of big projects is you use lots of scraps of yarn. Um, so like I said, so far there's 12 different, and they were pretty sizable balls, um, like this kind of size. They basically dug through and pulled out everything that was my hand spun that would felt and laid them all out and then let the kid pick. This is what I want. And once the clear red and blue theme started to emerge, He's a Spider-Man fan. Um, uh, that was when they sort of okay, let's let's go with with that. And so then, like these are the the parts of those twelve balls that I still have little tiny bits left of um, that I'm not done yet. I'm basically going to make the sleeves and the body until I run out of all of the little scraps. Um, so to me, if you've got a system that already works for dividing them and organizing them, that's great. Keep that up. But um, if you're kind of just like me and you're just, I don't know what I'm going to do with them, save yourself some like mental energy and just put them all in a box. But know where the box is so that you can add to it and, and grab what you want. Um, but don't feel limited when you want to do a large project to make too many rules about what yarns go together. Um, the biggest thing that I did with this is I, I knew what I wanted to make. I knew I wanted to make him a, a coat thing with a hood. Um, and so what I did is I basically found the thickest yarn. So I had this big, um, I pulled out all of the yarns that were going to work for the project that I wanted. So for this one, everything that was hand spun and wood felt. Um, and I went through it all and I found what was the thickest yarn that was in there. And it was this. Um, this was the thickest one. And so when I did my little sample piece to kind of test the concept and play with things a little bit, um, I chose my, I'm crocheting this piece, but I chose my crochet hook or your knitting needle um, based on the size of the thickest yarn. And I, I made a little sample and I played with things a little bit with that. And then when I was ready, so like this yarn came out of that stash. These two yarns are in no way the same thickness as each other. The red one is really thick and chunky and the light blue one is really skinny and thin. No problem, you just keep adding. So okay, I've got this yarn too and this is also too thin, it's thinner than the red. But you know what? This yarn and this yarn held together become thick enough for the red. Um, and so now, all of a sudden, you don't have to have all of your yarns be the same thickness. You can put multiple yarns together to create the thicknesses that you need. Um, and that has the benefit of kind of making everything blend a little bit more. So my stripes here, they kind of look like they're in a little bit of a pattern but they're not. I just kept grabbing different, like multiple different strands of blue to pair together um, to create the stripe, the thickness of the red yarn that I was using. And so my stripes are all sort of modeled all different colors and that's because they're all made up of two to three strands of just random different blues that I put together. So the blue stripes in here are not all the same um, yarns as each other. Uh, so that would be a, a tip that I would say is find the thickest yarn that you're going to do and then create the yarns you need to do the rest of the project by putting multiple strands together for, um, for the rest. Another tip would be um, if you want, you can go super, super scrappy with the way it looks where everything is just wild and crazy and you're truly just 
grabbing skeins out and almost not paying attention to what color they are and just letting it happen as it happens get those real wild and wild and crazy stripes or you can do what I did if you're not so much a fan of that really really scrappy look if you're blending the colors this way they really do start to look a little bit more intentional and so you can do one row or one stripe or one section can be all the blues and then the next one can be all the greens and then the next one can be all the purples and you can kind of create the yarn and the color ways that you want um, almost as you go or pull everything out and kind of organize it a little bit before you get there. Um, Another tip that I think works very well if you want to use up um, odds and ends of balls is make the project very size adjustable or size forgiving. So for this one, um, I, I knew I needed the hood to fit and I knew I needed sort of the, the chest part of the sweater where the arms were divided to fit that needed to physically go around his body but how long the sleeves are and how long the coat is is very size adjustable so i would say if you kind of just want to free flow go with it and kind of let the scraps of yarn decide how big your project's going to be pick a project that's going to lend itself well to that so like i started at the top because i needed the hood to fit and i needed the top part of the sweater to fit but then it, i can just keep going until i run out of yarn and then the sleeves are the right length and the body of the coat is the right length um that's how the these scraps when i run out of these i think i may have one or two other um small little balls in here like this um that uh, I can sneak in if I need um, a little bit extra length. Like I want both of the sleeves to be the same length as each other. So there's a little bit of that um, going on there. But um, in general, something, so if you're doing a shawl or a blanket or a, a scarf, um, try to think about coming at the project in a way that if you run out before maybe you meant to, or if you've got a little bit more and you can keep going, that it's kind of going to work for that. Um, so for instance, scarves may work better if you work long ways, because there's almost a, to me, it's more of a problem if your scarf is too short than if your scarf is too narrow. Um, and I often think that sort of this, that scrappy look in a scarf works better if the stripes go the long way down the scarf. And so do it that way. Cast on or chain the long way of the scarf. Um, then you know you've got the length you want. Um, and then just keep adding yarn until it's as wide as your, your yarn lets it be. You can have a 3-inch scarf that's going to work. Um, you can have a 12-inch scarf that's also going to work. Um, but a 4-foot long scarf doesn't so much work. Um, a nine foot long scarf also probably not gonna work unless you're going for that Doctor Who kind of look to it. Um, so try to either pick a project that lends itself well to being a different size or go at it in a way that will let you kind of get it to the size that you wanted and then stop as your yarn allows. Um, top down sweaters are probably gonna work better than sweaters done in pieces, like where you make the front and the back and the sleeves because those you kind of, you can't really just keep going until you run out. Um, you can make like a duster length sweater if you want to, if you start at the top and you get the top fitted and then just keep going until you run out of scraps. And if it goes down to your knees, you've got a really long sweater. Um, another uh, tip that I would give, especially if you don't care for that super, super scrappy look, um, or you're worried you don't have enough scraps, is choose one main color. So for this, the main color red that I used, I had two giant balls of that. I probably had 400 grams of like the equivalent of four standard balls of yarn of the red. And this was kind of the, the starting point for my project of the main color red. Um, and so that was not a scrap. And that red look just repeating itself through the whole project I think tones down the, let's say, enthusiasm of the rest of the yarn. I think if I had done this entirely out of my scrap bin, um, I think it would have been a little more wild and crazy than I would have liked the look of. Um, so I think going for um, kind of choose one yarn that will be constant that you have a lot of 
and then work the scraps around that. So do a stripe of the solid, a stripe of scraps, a stripe of solid, a stripe of scraps, so that you have that um, consistency and that theme going through it. And that's going to make your whole project seem a little bit more cohesive, if that's something that's important to you. If you like the enthusiasm of all of the different yarns together, um, then that's great. That's, that is exactly what you should do. Um, but adding that other yarn in that may be from stash or maybe even something that you go out and purchase to do your scrap project with, um, you may end up being a lot happier with the project overall. So you're still using your scraps, um, you're just incorporating something else in it also. Um, <clears throat> a note on fiber content. Um, and sort of how well different yarns will play together. Um, every yarn in this sweater is a either 100% wool or a lot of wool, like 80% plus of wool, and all of it is non-superwash. Um, that means that all of this will go through the washer and the dryer about the same as all of the other ones. And I actually tested that. I made, um, if you follow us on Facebook and Instagram, um, I done swatches um, for, I'm going to make a similar sweater for my other kid. Um, so I done two swatches where I used all of these yarns together in the swatch to make a little stripey piece like this. Um, and then I machine washed and machine dried them, both of them, several times um, to make sure that they were going to shrink at about the same rate, um, they were going to work together even after washing. And I think that is something that's important to consider, um, is how well are the different types of yarn that you're putting together going to, going to play with each other. Um, and my general rule is animal fibers like animal fibers, plant fibers like plant fibers, Synthetic fibers like synthetic fibers. Um, so that would be my recommendation. Um, if you're going to put it in something that you plan to wash. Um, so if you're doing like a macrame wall hanging, like this one, um, I'm not washing that. So it doesn't matter. I mean, that can be any, the rules don't apply. That can be whatever you want it to be. Um, if you're doing something else that you're never going to wash or so infrequently as to be a non-issue, um, then that's not gonna, gonna matter so much. Um, if you're making something where if certain sections of the piece, like if, if one section is made out of wool and that part is going to shrink when you wash it and another part is made out of cotton and that part is gonna stretch when you wash it, if you're making it something where that's okay and it doesn't matter, then great, you can put whatever you want together. That's, that's not a problem as long as you understand that that might happen. Um, so for instance, if you were doing just a super casual like floor rug, um, just like a like to go by your back door kind of a thing, and you're going to do basically one row stripes, and then it's going to have like a fringe on the side or something, um, and you did a stripe of a wool, and then th three stripes in a row are cotton, and then another wool, and then a synthetic, and you're just, they're all mixed in, but they're only single stripes across, and if this mat that you wipe your feet on staying pristine isn't a high priority for you, those yarns, even though they may not play well together, um, which basically means when they get wet, they're going to do different things. They're going to stretch and one's going to grow and one's not going to change at all. Um, if you don't care if your rug gets a little wonky, so the, the part that shrinks, though that part will get a little bit narrower and the part that stretches will get a bit wider, so it may sort of rumple up a little bit. If that's fine with you, then you're also good to go. Do whatever you want together. If you were doing a coat for your kid and you want to felt it, you need to make sure that all your yarns felt because otherwise you're going to end up with a stripe of this that felts and shrinks a lot and then another stripe that doesn't and is real big and baggy. Um, and you're going to have like caterpillar arms, like the arms of the sweater is going to go out and in and out and in. Um, that is not what I'm going for. So I tested it ahead of time to make sure that everything would felt and do what I wanted it to do. So just be aware when you're putting different yarns together, it may be more important that you do a swatch or at least that you know what they're made from. So like I said, generally the animal fibers are going to all work pretty well together. Generally those behave about the same as each other. So 100% alpaca is going to behave fairly similar to 100% wool. It's going to behave fairly similar to 100% angora. Um, 
the the catch with that is superwash versus non-superwash. So a superwash animal fiber has been treated so that it will not felt when it goes through the washer. And a non-superwash has not been treated, so it will felt when it goes through the washing machine. Um, so if you want the whole thing to felt, make sure you are making the whole thing out of something that will felt. If you don't want the whole thing to felt, make sure that either you're making the whole thing out of um, animal fiber yarns that will not felt, if you're gonna put it in the washer, or hand wash the whole thing. Um, because a super wash wool and a not super wash wool actually will play fine together as long as you hand wash it. But once you start machine washing it, the feltable stuff is gonna felt and the not feltable stuff is not. And so then you get that those wavy edges again. <clears throat> Um, so that's, those are kind of my big, uh, that was the big thought process that went into this project. And I think that hopefully that will be a bit of a jumping off point, um, for anybody who wants to sort of use their scraps to create a bigger project. Um, I think there's a lot of patterns and things out there that use just very small amounts of yarn, and those can be fantastic um, projects. But if you've got a really, really large amount of the of the spare yarn, um, the little half balls and quarter balls and three quarters balls, um, you it, it can be nice to see a big dent happen in your yarn. Um, and if all you ever knit is socks, and so all of your spare yarn is sock yarn that's going to be a lot easier to deal with um, than if you were like me and I have everything from the frog hair super skinny thin um, lace weight yarn up to a super chunky <laughs> this yarn um, you are going to um, kind of need to put just a little bit more thought into things um, but pairing it with a solid color in a larger amount is going to work well. Remembering that you can put multiple strands together to create a thicker yarn is going to work well. Sticking all in one color family, so using all blues um, together in a project is going to sort of make everything look more cohesive. Or you can embrace the very enthusiastic um, and just combine everything willy-nilly and that can look really fun too. So dive into those yarn stashes and make something big. Um, nothing says I want a giant wool thing on top of me than 95 degree weather, right? <laughs> I have been working on this while waiting for my kid at swim practice, which is outside and it was literally 93 today. Um, so maybe don't do that. <laughs> um, this is the time for cotton um, or air conditioning. 